So what operating system do you want this server to run? Because this is not the operating system you go to Computer Village to buy and it comes on a CD and you run it from scratch. We just call this simpler format of operating system image. So operating system image is just a way of saying the small portable version of the bigger kind of operating system. But it doesn't lack anything in the same. It's just because if you come here, you see that there are different kinds of operating system. There's Linux, Amazon Linux, uh, Ubuntu, Windows Server Operating System, Red Hat, SUSE, uh, Mac OS, uh, Debian, and so on and so forth, right? It's even possible that it's, what you are looking for is not there. You can click this and you see me, in fact, hundreds of other different kinds of operating systems, all right? So whatever operating system your client needs, or according to your architecture, you determine that this is the best operating system for this purpose. You are going to take it here and then use it. Some of them are free of charge, like this one. This is free tier, all right? Free tier. Verify provider. This one, you may have to pay for it because free tier is not there. You know, Apple doesn't joke with their properties. So you always pay heavily for anything, all right? So whether you are paying or you are not paying, that's a different thing. The bottom line is all the different kinds of operating system are available. Just take what you want. So Z is a Linux operating system. So from what you can already observe, you see that even though there are many types of operating systems, more than 90% of them are Linux or Linux-based. Ubuntu is Linux, Windows. Uh, and then another observation, I don't know if I'm... Let me not rush you with too many information. Let's just focus. All right. So uh, let me not give you too much information. So let's... At this level, but of course, you have them later on. So let's launch and then let's go back to what do we call it? Uh, and it. All right. So let's just take one of these operating systems. So we'll take uh, Amazon Linux. What's the next thing? Amazon Machine Image. So you come here. Look at this. What we are seeing here is that there are different types of computers already prepared. All right. This one is free. This one is free. But if you are taking this, you'll be charged. The more powerful ones, you'll be charged to use them. But for now, let us just take one of the free ones so that we are not charged. It just means that this is a simple computer, okay? 64 uh, bit. It's just a simpler one than this one. So we'll take that, right? Architecture, done. For now, don't worry. Now. And then instance type. There are different kinds of instance type. T2 Micro has only one processor. T2 Micro has one processor and one gig RAM. T2 Small has one processor and two gig RAM. And then look all the way down. Two, T2 Large has four processors and 60. This is a big computer, big system, already in cloud. And you can go all the way down to go and find one system that has 48 processors and 384 gig RAM. This is like 48 computers in a room working together as one computer. This one. Imagine how much processing this computer can do for you in one minute. It's very, very powerful, very powerful. And then you'll be charged 6.67 US dollar per hour for the use, right? So if you were setting up a company where you want to compete, you already have millions of customers with you. You are not in the league of uh, let's start small and see how it will go. Then you, you know that, of course, these small, small computers cannot do that work. You want to go for the big computer, right? I'm just calling them computers so that you understand that they are computers, but they actually call instances and these are the different types, all right? So you can take any of them. But for now, since we are just practicing, we have to just take this. And then keep here. Keep here is what we use to connect to our server remotely, like we did with, uh, like we did with uh, our SSH client. Which SSH client did we use there? We use the mobile extent, all right? So yeah. without keep here, you will not be able to connect. Keep here is the security key to tell the client that you have authority to connect to the server. So when you say keep here, it means the key and the padlock. If you don't have a key and padlock, if you don't have the padlock, the key to the padlock, you will not be allowed to connect. You know, you must set up your key, all right? So in this case, we say create a new key pair and then we'll give it a name. Give it any name. Let's call it uh, a day key pair, all right? Just leave it as it is. Uh, it will use it in that format. Create key pair. All right. So that is it. It's downloaded already. And I know that anything that is downloaded to my computer is automatically downloaded to my download folder. All right. So I go all the way down. We'll do networking later. So let me not bother you talking here. And then automatically, by default, you must allow, it comes with allow SSH connection. If it does not come with that, then you will not be able to connect to your server. And then your server is completely useless. If after setting it up, you are not able to connect to it in order to compute. So this must always be. If it is not on, then you'll not be able to connect to server. And then why are you setting up server and wasting resources if you cannot connect to it? You always leave that one, all right? So that's why it is on by default. And then as we progress, we'll come here later on and then we'll turn this on. I'll show you what it is for now. That's just uh, your storage, all right? So if you want more storage than it, you can add, but for now, let's leave it. So you just set this and then how many instances do you want it to set up for you? 
at once. You want to set up three instances, you can put three. If you set up three, server simultaneously, all right? And then you go all the way down, and then you say launch your instances. Your three instances are launching now, and they have successfully launched. One, two, three, all right? So you have set up three powerful servers right now, right away. If you are going to do this, in the non-virtual world, in the real world, it will take you at least three weeks to order the computers. They will come to you, you plug them in, you run up, you put operating system in them, and then you prepare. It was going to take you so, so, so much compared to going to cloud. And in 10 minutes, your servers are ready. Look at all our three servers. They're initialized. All right. So this is how to set up the server. And server is the number one thing. The, you are going to learn to set up so many things, maybe up to 100 different kinds of services. But EC2 is the primary is the number one thing that you must make this. EC2 is. All right, I'll take your questions now and then just to revise everything we've done so far. And we'll post. So please ask questions in case you don't understand anything. Yes, sir. Yeah. So when the key pairs, can you use the same key pair for more than one instance, let's say? Yes, once create, you have the key pair file, you can use that same file. For example, add it as many times as you want. Okay, thank you. you know, yeah, you can use the same key and padlock to lock off so many. Yeah. In fact, it's ideal because if you keep creating key pair for every EC2 instance that you create, you have too many of them and be confused. So the ideal thing is to have your own personal key pair, save it, and every time you are creating an additional EC2, you use that key. I, when I logged in back, I was like searching everywhere to see what is No, it's going. gone. It's already gone. No need for two. I mean, it, you killed it, so it's gone. And it's a good thing to do. It's a it's a good practice to always key your service when you're not needing them. When, I, when you're not using them. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be wasting money while they are. So no regrets. Um, what about when you stop the um, the instant? Uh, okay, I'll explain that. I'll explain the difference between stopping and coming But for now, I still need to teach some, some things okay. to help the other people understand. Okay. So, for example, let me ex let me quickly explain something that will help you understand that answer. Let's go to share whiteboard. Now, when we say computer, a computer has three different services by which you judge how powerful or how not powerful a computer is. These three resources, they're actually called resources. I don't want to use that in that as well. Uh, one, the memory, generally represented as RAM. Two, the processing process. Processor speed, generally represented by CPU, central processing unit, and then the storage, storage, generally represented as a, uh, to be HDD, but HDD is no longer popular. That technology is called SDD, right? We're well, here SDD storage. So the point I'm making here is, in order to tell me about the computer, you must refer to these three things. These three things. These three things are called the system resources. System resources. 